Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork popped out, boop, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The black IPA is delicious. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. Feels like we took a long hiatus, but it's probably only been a week for the listeners. <laughs> Two weeks for us. It feels like it been. It been. It feels like it feels like a, a break, like a real break. Right. We had. I was on vacation. Then the Fourth of July happened. Then we were, you know, had forty days of. Rain, 40 days a night, 40 days of rain, 40 nights of smog. Fucking end of, <laughs> end of days in Chicago. Um, the Canadian fires caught up to us, so the smog was crazy. And then after the smog left, it flooded like fucking never before around here. It was really gross. I don't know. It flooded like two years ago, similar to that. Yeah. Pretty bad. So, and, you know, I'm, su- I'm surprised in 2023 that shit floods like this. That seems like a thing that used to happen. When the streets were wooden, right? You know what I mean? Like, it don't seem like, it doesn't seem like, it seems like flooding is something we don't do anymore. I don't know. We got nowhere for the water to go. We got all this water right here. We can't put more water in. They yeah. had to, like, reverse the flow of the river this past weekend. The river the- was bigger. The river was higher than the lake. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so and it's had, usually the other way around. They had to, like, send water into the lake yeah. versus the other way around. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I worked in uh, Lake County, you know, up by Great America. And sometimes I take the side streets back when it was raining all crazy. And it's so deep that your car will get stalled in some of these little towns, you know, yep. Kenilworth or Glencoe and these little fucking villages. Yeah. It's it's weird. But yeah, flooding's very real around here. Mm-hmm. So. But now the, the sun's back out. We're feeling the joys of summer. And we got ourselves a hoppy lager. Yeah, man. I am here for this, man. This is uh, Old Irving Brewery Doji. Yeah. Hopped on the, the scooter. And went over and grabbed a four pack. You still got that scooter? Yeah. Man, that's a fun ride, man. I'm jealous. It's uh, <laughs> like the fastest way to get there. I was like, um, let's just get the scooter. Let's go. Backpack, scooter. We're Done. Off. And then you got the option to pedal, I think, on the scooter, right? No, not on the scooter. On the bike, yeah. Electric bike. But on the, just like those scooters, like those scooters you see on the sidewalks. Wait, you got, oh, do you have an electric bike and a scooter? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. <laughs> hey, so there's Citra Amarillo. Oh, it just says Citra and Amarillo over and over again. I thought it was like six hops in here. Oh, okay. It just says Citra and Amarillo. Maybe that's why I'm loving this so much. <laughs> it's got Amarillo hops in it. Old school. Like the very first beer you fell in love with probably had Amarillo. Yeah. We had another hoppy lager from them recently. Uh, maybe Sentinel or something like that. But this one's better. I think I like this one better. Yeah, because it um, it smells like a fresh pale ale. It mm-hmm. smells like a fresh IPA, and but it's got the lager body. I, I'm I'm with this style. Yeah, this could probably go on, which we need to now do that we're halfway through the year as July kicks off. Our six our favorite beers of the year so far. So this, this is, might sneak a favorite. This is very good, and so is that Hopewell. Lemon thing, yeah. the lemon Meyer thing. I have to go back and see what we've been yeah. drinking, but maybe maybe next week we'll do that because okay. I didn't, I didn't think of it until now, so <laughs> I'm unprepared. So probably we're gonna crush this four pack. I have a feeling it's delicious. Yeah, and then since I was out of town um, in, in Mexico, in yeah. Cancun, getting all the pina coladas and Miami vices I could drink. Is Miami vice a drink? Yeah, it's okay. a pina colada <laughs> and a strawberry daiquiri. Oh. Mixed together. Okay. Like half and half. All right. That don't sound bad. That's the way to do it. You know? A little, maybe a little Miami Vice. Two drinks in one. Cool, man. Yeah. So I had <laughs> no craft beer. Okay. I had drank a lot of Tecante Lights. Right on. <laughs> and a few Modelos here. Number one beer in the U.S. Yeah. Also owned by AB. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's 
funny. Yeah, because I don't think um, it would be antitrust if they sold it in America, since they sell so much Budweiser in America. Oh, okay. Um, so Constellation Brands distributes it in America, but AB owns Modelo. The rest yeah. of the world, or the rest of the world, they sell it to the rest of the world. Oh, yeah. funny. So um, I was just, a, but Tecante, I don't know, is Tecante um, a Constellation that's a, brand? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Because I never made my way around to it. I mean, I've had it before. Yeah. But I don't know much about them as a brand. Yeah. Well, it could just be brewed at Modelo, for all we know. Tecante Light isn't good. No. Presidente Light isn't good in Jamaica. But when you're in that sun, you want the wateriest thing that can kind of get you drunk. For sure. You, just need to, you just always need to be hydrating. Yeah. And that's like, if you got your pina colada, you got a Tecante Light. Yeah. You do that. So, But you've been all over... Uh, this great state of ours. Man, I was doing my best uh, Brad Shemaluski impersonation. I've been slacking, like, for the last <laughs> month. I have not left my, like, little bubble. Yeah, you know, I saw, um, well, you know, when we were at uh, Bug, we saw Kishwaukee Brewing, and initially we thought they were in Milwaukee, or Wisconsin. I thought they were in Wisconsin. It, just yeah. sound, it sounded Wisconsin. Yeah, it sounded Wisconsin. And then I just didn't know about them, but they're in Woodstock, Illinois, and they won a medal for their brown ale. Okay. Uh, Buffalo. It's almost like Geneva. When you're in Woodstock, you're like close to, isn't that Geneva? Like on the border where you can buy, uh, you can almost get New Glarus. I got to be honest with you, Brad. I don't know where the fuck I was at. I you're, was, you're past like so hopped. You're past more it Huntley. Is, it, it, is, um, it is oddly close to so hopped. And I wasn't expecting that. So when I came back to the expressway, I'm like, oh, so hopped right there. Yeah. Yeah. Which means, and then when you get on the expressway, you pass more Huntley. So it's like that's your three way right there. <laughs> the longest. <laughs> I didn't realize how close they were. You know, those two breweries are close to um, uh, Woodstock. There's another one out there. I think killing, killing her. Yeah. Kleinger. Is it? Is it? Is it <laughs> maybe killed deer? Kill, uh, yeah, we've uh, had one of their beers. They've if they've got like a a buck or something on the label. Yeah, and they're in a the strip mall. Yep. On that same road, you pass all these other breweries. Yeah, I was telling I was telling Shalanda, I was like, I think me and Brad had that beer because I remember that logo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are four breweries you can hit if you decide to escape Occupy Chicago and hit one. You could just make a trip of it. I guess, yeah. Yeah. So um, in true Beer Pass fashion, I went searching for the Burger Dude. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, uh, biker Burger. Biker Burger. A Biker Dude. Yes. Um, top, top, burger, uh, top burger around mm-hmm. probably so okay. far. Um, oh, but he wasn't, he wasn't grilling at the brewery. He was gr- grilling at a bar in Woodstock. Okay. And I, I said, the brewery's up there, so I think I'll just do both of them. Okay. Was yeah. the place packed for the burger guy? Yeah, they had a, um, this building is like 110 years old, this bar, Ortman's Bar, uh, 110 years old. But their patio was just a, a year old. So they were celebrating a year of the patio. And then they had a live band, and then they had Burger Dude doing his thing. Oh, so then they had an event. It wasn't just the burger guy. Right. So I was kind of surprised that he was there considering how it's only a half a mile from uh, the brewery. Right. Kishwaukee. But then once I got to Kishwaukee, I noticed that they already had a a food truck, a a veteran-owned food truck called Smashed. So I think they already had someone there, and that's how Burger Dude ended up. I didn't really get clarity on it because I didn't understand that there was somebody already at the brewery. Okay. And so Smashed is another traveling burger person yeah where burger where a biker dude's layout is he's got the giant metal grill in a tent and he's got like his knees taking orders this guy has like a classic food truck set up smashed okay so it's his food truck it's branded and then uh, he's doing onion rings i didn't see the burger so um i don't know much about smashed so we got we got four we kind of know about right we got a biker, a dude, biker dude, smashed, smashed, secret Chicago secret burger, and then this Hiburito S- smash burger, smash Hiburito, I think it's called, yeah. right? Those are the seem like the four main ones. I think there's another one that uh, is often at Bubble House. Uh, another burger? Yeah, another burger that I forgot. I'm blanking on the name. So there's like five kind of burger traveling burger people at the moment that we know of. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm very curious about Smash, but I didn't I didn't double dip. I got the burger at Ortman's A Biker Dude. What held you back? You know, I'm not a I'm not a two burger and one day guy. Mm. You know, just not. I get the one burger and I'm okay. I'm okay. I stopped there. 
Brad's a psychopath, so Brad, Brad would have went and got both burgers. I would have had to know. I needed to know, <laughs> even if you're just like, I'll eat half and then wrap it up and like see, just maybe need it for the eight hour drive back. Looking back on it, I think that is a fair play. Yeah, you get it, you cut it in half immediately, you have a bite, you take it home. Yeah. And then you know, then you have to wonder. Now I can be here and say, hey, this is where it ranks. What? <laughs> it could it could be better. Those onion rings look good as fuck, man. You know, so <laughs> yes. Chicago beer fest. That's like become this burger podcast. You were at the brew this brewery, and this I only is, went because I heard it was burgers nearby. <laughs> this is the brewery that won at uh, JBF or something. Um, not JBF. At, World no, World Beer Cup. World Beer Cup for their brown. Yeah, they. I think they took a bronze for the brown. You were not the most exciting win. No, but it's a win. You know, it's brown ale, right? So, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's you know, toffee, it's roasty, it's caramely. Oh, but I drink this beer, and um, there's no branding on the glassware, so I just buy a six-pack of the beer. Right. And I'm, like, looking at the ABV, I'm like, holy shit, it's 6.8%. Oh, shit. And I think that's kind of part of what makes it special. Like, it's a good beer. But then they really do a good job of hiding this ABV. Big brown. It's big brown. Mm. It's big brown. So it was fantastic stuff, man. So... There's a lady with like short spiked hair that I remember vaguely from Bug when we were there. Okay. I saw her again. I'm like, I saw you at Bug. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? This place is massive. This place, it's not quite the size of uh, more Huntley, but it's big, man. What? I, really? I'm trying to tell you, it's massive. They got like a 15 barrel system. It's just a very a surprisingly big space. Okay. And um, I'm like, what was here, man? They're like, you know, we built this place from the ground up. Um, we had a false start. It was ready to go in uh, October 2020, but we couldn't because of the, you know, okay. we were knee deep. Um, but yeah, and they're off and running. Their very first keg they ever sold was to Ortman's, the place where Biker Dude was. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's um, cool. So I'm like, well, what else is selling here, you know, besides this brown ale? He's like, she's like, people love the brown before the award, and people drink a lot of their marts, and they have a, uh, they have an Oktoberfest style Marzen that they just have on year round, and that's their top selling beer. What? Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, this is a crazy brewery. It is, man. We got a, we got a tart saison. It was like a peach saison. Okay. Tart peach saison. Four point five. Fantastic stuff on a summer night. This fucking brown ale was pretty good, and um, I feel like this is a place I would go back to. Really? Like it was really good. I was yeah. I was I was pleasantly surprised at the old uh, Kishwaukee. Well, and knowing. We said earlier there's three other breweries that way so going there isn't like a solo trip like right going to some of these other ones you're like oh, i want to go back there but i'm just going there like sometimes you need like a little extra kicker be like oh we can go back there i like that but we can also go to so hop yeah um this was in the middle of the rainstorm i thought about going to so hop but then I was like, well, then I'll still be way the fuck out here an hour after right now. Right. So I'm like, I'm going home. So we just ended up going home. Um, oh, one more thing about Kishwaukee. Well, it's named after a river nearby. Never really saw this river. Saw signs for it on the road. Never really saw the river. But when you look into it, you know, they got, I think, like a hospital named after the river. There's a school named after the river. There's like a three or four things named after this river. Oh. And the brewery is just like the next thing in line. Okay. So, um. Good hang, no man. Fun, fun people, and um, Burger Dude. He's always he, he killed it. So okay, it's a good time. Did you talk to him at all? Or just... Yeah, yeah, because um, it was his first time meeting um, Shalanda. Oh, okay. And I think they kind of circle each other on the on the internets. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, so I got the Frank's Burger, which I believe is a double patty with Merks and hot sauce, mm. and then I think she just got the original smashed. Okay. So, yeah, he's a super nice guy too. Nice. Yeah. So that was fun. Awesome. So you were out in Woodstock, and then you went out to, well, Mundelein. Mundelein? And this is a place you and I have been to. Yeah. Um, I feel like we were coming from probably Black Lung. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tighthead Brewing in Mundelein. So, um, yeah, I stopped in there just for a pint on a weeknight. Oh, yeah. You know? Uh, there was a uh, a group of older guys in their little biker suits, the bicycle bicycling group. Yeah. And then um, that's when I noticed they got a little decal for a, a race. It's an Intelligentsia Cup biking race that they sponsor called oh. the Mundelein Invitational or something. Oh, shit. cool. Okay. Um, but yeah, I went there for the uh, Scarlet Fire. That's their red ale. 
Right. And then I got the hell out of there. Um, Scott fired uh, a lot maltier than I remember. Yeah. Tighthead, I feel like Tighthead's kind of strange where, like, I like it, but I don't like their beers. Hmm. Like, that's like a weird, like, that Scarlet Fire is good, and I like it, but then I drink more of it, I'm like, maybe I don't like this. And, and then maybe you finish it, and you're like, oh, I, I did like that. Oh it's God. gone. It's like a weird, so that's weird. a weird, I have a weird relationship, kind of, whenever I have their beers, I'm always like, these are good. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand. I think Tighthead refers to the, uh, the, the a spiral on the football, right? Because their logo is like a football. Right. And I think you, if you throw a really sharp dart of a football, you know, it's, it, the head's tight. It didn't wobble when you threw it. It's got a tight head. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Well, looking at the football, I mean, I'm like, that, that's got to be it, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. And then um, one of their beers is an IPA with a Chicago bear called Long Snapper. Okay. Um, I forget the guy's name, but he's like a he was a bear for like twenty years. Okay. Um, yeah, tight has fine. You know, Mundelein is like next door to Lake Forest in Libertyville, mm-hmm. and um, so we work in Lake Forest and we go to a homebrew shop all the time. Okay, and the uh, the, the original head brewer for Tight Head used to work at the at the homebrew shop. The hippie. Yeah, uh, I forget his name, but he always wore yeah. shades. Yeah, <laughs> he had the heavy voice. He like loves fish. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Grateful Dead. Yeah, exactly. Guy. That guy. Yeah. So that's how we started. Tommy, go- but it's not Tommy. I forget his name too, but I I can see his face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, but side note, man. So we know that guy, the guy we're talking about, the 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 head brewer, and then the owner is Bruce Durr. He's an older guy. He's got like uh, grayish blonde hair. And you're talking about Grateful Dead. It reminded me um the last Grateful Dead show ever. The anniversary was recently. Mm-hmm. Oh, so anyway, they had a massive tailgate. Um, just south of Soldier Field, like down there by McCormick Place, okay. at 31st Street Beach, basically. So I remember distinctly, like, uh, I'm on the beach side. I got to get across the highway to get to this tailgate because everybody's there, you know, dry hop, fucking sweet water, like just a massive parking lot fest. Okay. So I'm walking up this ramp to cross the bridge and get over to the uh, parking lot. And the owner of Tight Head sees me, <laughs> and he picks me up and puts me in his pickup truck. Oh, funny. And he's got this big lanyard because he's got all access to fucking Grateful Dead. And he's telling me a story that I've heard like three times now that like, um, you know, if it were the late 80s or the early 90s, the only place you could get craft beer from all across the country was in the parking lot of a Grateful Dead show. Oh, right. And, yeah. uh, and that's why a lot, of, a lot of these brewers are deadheads, in part because that's where all the good beer was. So that, that's funny. Nice. Whew. That's a long journey for a pint. Yes, it is. So, yeah. yeah. Um, my buddy was up there. Uh, my buddy bought a house up there, and he bought, he lives alone. He bought 23 steaks. He bought 300 dollars worth of steak. He's like, you got to come get 70 steaks. I'm like, I, okay, fine. I'll go. So i like, well, if you're in Mundelein, that means I can go to Tighthead. So I fucking went. Right. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty ridiculous, though. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, any other stops or other places you've popped into over the last week man um shout out to um phase three brewing okay. um they've got this boat series every thursday on a uh, a chicago fire boat so it docks downtown not the chicago fire team right soccer like team. the actual chicago fire department okay yeah they have a retired boat run by a couple of old uh i want to say army or marine veterans okay um Oh, so they pack a bunch of phase three beers on the boat. They charge you. They do, and you do a two hour fucking uh, sunset cruise on a fire boat. If you <clears throat> understand the need for like a fire boat, if your if your boat starts on fire in the water, just let it burn. Like you just need someone to like come and save you, save the people on it. You don't need to like save the boat. The boat's done. You're Brad, in water. Brad, you probably have to. Stop the boat from burning to get the people off the boat. That might be. Jump. <laughs> get in the water. It's water. <laughs> oh, I mean, that is, that, is, that is one approach. That is one approach to uh, saving people on a boat. Uh, when your house is burning, you get out of the house. You do get out of the house. When your boat's burning, you just stay on the boat. <laughs> you know. The first thing I do when I get on a boat is I'm like, all right. You guys haven't told me where we're going. That's cool. We probably ain't going that far from the pier. 
where the fuck are the life jackets? Just let me point those out. Okay, now let's start drinking. You know, all right, now, now I'm fine. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is a phase three. So it's a, it's a collab between the dudes on the boat and phase three. And then phase three, I think they, um, what was the story? Uh, not Sean the Brewer, but the other guy, Evan. Okay. He's also a former military. So both of these guys are former military, and that's why that's how they came up with this idea. Hey, we'll go out on Thursdays and just sell nothing but Phase 3 beer on this boat. So you go on this boat, there's like eight Phase 3 beers that you can oh, pick from. You have to buy them. Your ticket includes your first one. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have to pay for them as you go. Exactly. Yeah. So um, so the guys who run the boat, they run the boat. I'm talking to the Phase 3 lady. I'm like, are you excited about Elmhurst? You know, because fucking that other place is kind of far. I like Phase 3. Don't really like going up there. Yeah. Hard to get back at night because those streets are weird. There's no lights. There's fucking werewolves, all kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. Elmhurst, when is it opening? You're like, well, you know, they got the chef from Cherry Circle Room, uh, which is in Cindy's downtown. Oh, okay. Um, didn't know that. And we're like, well, where else did you look? Because it's funny that you're moving a half a mile from where the guy used to brew. Yeah. And she's like, you know, we actually looked in Rosemont. Oh, that would have been sweet. We looked in South Loop. Oh. We looked in West Loop. I was Whoa. like, Phase 3 West Loop? That sounds amazing. But ultimately, they just thought Elmhurst was the best fit for space. Sure. So, And probably price, right? So yeah, they probably got a bigger space for cheaper price. Yeah, yeah. So, so like people are going to come no matter what. We could be in Woodstock. Uh, people will come, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so that was good. Uh, some good nuggets. Uh, speaking of uh, hoppy lagers, I had a hoppy lager from them. That I really enjoyed. Yeah. I did take photos of their tapless, and I had a German Pills, and then I had a, a fresh DDH IPA, man. Nice. So this was oh, and then they had uh, like three lulls. They had three lulls, a dry Irish stout, four IPAs, and then a bunch of different German Pilsners and a Rattler. I haven't had one of those lulls in a while. After I, you know, sang the praise of it, I just haven't. I don't want a whole six pack of it. For sure. I yeah. enjoy them, but I don't want a six pack. It's too sweet to have that many in your house. Yeah. So their um their dry hot pills was called Geo. It called it a, they called it a West Coast pills. Hmm. So I guess it used whatever hops you're using on West Coast IPA. Five and a half percent. Nice. So yeah, that was cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 30, 40. So 14 options on a boat with phase three. Sweet. That's pretty, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You mentioned we, Black Lung on our, when we went to Tighthead. They have a Kickstarter that's happening, right? I think so, yeah, for location number two, which is um, the original location is around Lake Beach. The second location is um, on the Chain of Lakes. Okay. I forget which town. It's one of the towns with one of the, on the Chain of Lakes. I forgot kickstarter was a thing yeah i think the most uh successful version of that was probably uh pipeworks but then the pipeworks guy said they had that money that had the amount they were asking for they had that amount already as part of their project mm -hmm. because they couldn't depend on just the kickstarter sure. money and then uh sketchbook did a kick couple kickstarters 18th street did one that mm -hmm. was successful for their brand band of bohemian did one and that did not go well i really i either forgot that one or don't remember they that were doing a kickstarter to open up either the upstairs i think it was the upstairs to turn it into a game room yeah so it was going to be like pinball and arcade games and you know and a bar upstairs it was either upstairs or that back room uh, well and that didn't work out Part of the issue, I think, and with Kickstarter in general, not just with brewery Kickstarters, part of the issue was they promise you like so much stuff on every tier. You get it, you know. You, the, the people doing the Kickstarter. The people who participate in the Kickstarter, you're promised a thing, and then you just never get the thing. Right. Right. Whether it's a like a case of beer or a brewery been, tour, or a jacket, or you don't get none of this right. shit. I've been burnt on many a Kickstarter, yeah. and also forgotten about Kickstarters, and they're like, "Well, it's too late. You didn't respond." <laughs> It's like, what? <laughs> we, yeah, I'll give you money and then respond <laughs> we, eight months later? We had this um, <laughs> we had this eight ball jacket with our brewery name branded on it, and uh, you missed out. <laughs> yeah. Speak of that, where's our Guinness uh, jacket? Dude, so I saw a guy reviewing restaurants on, the, on IG, and he was at the event, and he was rocking his Guinness stuff. 
And I meant to ask you this two weeks ago. I haven't seen I one. didn't get mine. We got to reach out to our, our buddy. Oh, yeah. The, our fellow. I forget his name. He's cool. Yeah, the Guinness guy. The Guinness guy. Yeah. Our, Guinness, our Guinness connect. <laughs> You gotta get we got we got a Guinness guy. <laughs> we got a guy. You know he works at Guinness. No no big deal. You know. Tell you. But yeah, I didn't get um I didn't get my I didn't get my Guinness my my Guinness swag man. Okay. Um, but yeah, Black Lung is a Kickstarter. I haven't really looked into it. I just know it exists. Um, like I said, I've been burning a Kickstarter a number of times, so I'm not that interested in doing something like Kickstarter. Yeah, but I think that's the route they're going for location number two, right. which I believe is an old bar that they are um, outfitting for their satellite tap room. And hopefully it's something where, like, I think with the when Sketchbook did their second Kickstarter, it was like, oh, we're already doing this, but we can make this better mm-hmm. if you guys like help us out and you'll get some rewards like we can put up we can have better chairs we can do like soundproofing otherwise we're just going to put up some basic stuff like let's let's upgrade the things we were already planning to do right so right uh, but yeah uh and then what well, you mentioned this mars in that's on tap oh at um fucking uh kishwaukee brewing and you didn't have it no, I just had the uh, Bufflehead Brown, which is the one that won. Bufflehead apparently is a type of uh, duck okay. that's in, I assume, in the Kishwaukee River. Are we ready for Marzins already? It's like July 6th, man. Seven? Seven? Right? Seven, seven. Seven, 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 ninety-three, eleven. No, man. It's July 7th, man. But they're already, they're coming. Fucking Half Acre, and we are the official, unofficial Half Acre pod. They sent out a. (laughs) Yeah, it might be old Irving this year. (laughs) Half Acre sent out a newsletter on July fourth that their Marzen Lager Town, delicious by the way, is is making its debut July twenty sixth through early September. So it's not even going to be around. You're going to have to like get it and save it. It'll be it'll be around in September. Right. Right. Yeah, but because um because the actual Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest is called Oktoberfest, but the actual Oktoberfest in Munich actually is the welcoming of October. So yeah. the party is in mid-September. I understand that. Okay, okay. But <laughs> I want to be in my Halloween costume drinking uh, Oktoberfest beer. It does kind of symbolize, you know, fall. Of, all the way, I think Halloween to Thanksgiving is like what I think of when I think of Oktoberfest. Yeah, malty, almost like comforting beers to be like, all right, summer's over. I understand Oktoberfest starts in September, but that's not when I want them. (laughs) (laughs) But let me tell you when I want them, god damn it. Drink these hobby lagers until (laughs) until October Um, 1st. (laughs) Then I'll think about Switcher. Yeah, it's, you know. That and pumpkin beers in July. I'm with you. I don't want to think about that shit either. Yeah. All right. Well, Lager Pound might be the first. Well, besides this one that's oddly around all year. Can you get in a Stein at least? Well, you know, um, probably. But you know, uh, Argus, before they closed, they had an all year margin. It was the one that won at uh, World Bill Cup. Argus is a tragic story because. The, their beers weren't that great for the longest time. They just had a really cool story, and they were super fun people. I and mean, then by the time their beers got really good, nobody cared. Nobody cared. You know, nobody cared. They fucked up a lot of the uh, brand, I don't know, social uh, social capital that they had. Yeah. Right. Like, there's so many other options. It's like, okay, I'm not biting that apple anymore. Fuck them kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Which is sad, but true. Oh, but... um. But anyway, one of their one of their year round beers, one of their best beers was an all year Marzen. That's the only other time I'm hearing about this Marzen all year thing. So. so I don't know how I feel about it. Like there are times where, depending on maybe what you're eating for dinner or something, you're like, oh, I could go for something a little malty. Like I randomly found like a a Doppelbach, mm-hmm. the New Glarus Doppelbach in See? the fridge from Ips, at least over a year ago. See? And I started to drink it, and I was like, 
yuck, this is too malty. Oh. But then I had like a, a Sam Adams like hoppy lager first, and then I went to that, and I was like, okay. It, it, it's pretty cool because it's not a Schwartz beer, right? It's a lager. It reminds you of how cool lagers can be because there's different, so many different types. Yeah. So it's like a brown, a dark brown lager. Um, but that mark, a copper, a copper lager. Yeah, but you gotta be in a, you can't like finish mowing the lawn and then be like, well, let me get this Mars in. in Ma- the, maybe. In the, in the middle of June. Maybe July. not. No, it is, it is too dense for that. I yeah. agree. Maybe if you're raking leaves. Now we're back to, now we're back to Brad's, uh, you know, salt box on. <laughs> time to place. <laughs> 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 okay, Lager Town's coming. It might be first. It might be the first to the to the new release this year. That was fun last year when we lined them all up and did like a power lightning round. We gotta do it again, right? That was that was fun. That was very fun. Okay, gotta start. I'll start stocking up here in July. <laughs> the supply chain demands that these beers <laughs> apparently hit the fucking market in July before everybody can get them on time. So, or, or something. I guess. Damn. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else happening around town? Uh, Pitchfork's coming up. I don't know if Goose Island has a beer. Traditionally, that's that's been their thing. Some really fun ones, too. Run the Jewels, um, Chance the Rapper, some not-so-fun ones, Japanese Breakfast, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, I was going to say Etta James, but there is a Sharon Von Etten. I believe she had a Goose beer at one point. Okay. Um, some awesome, some not so much. Some really cool ones, though. I think the Chance the Rapper one, he never even showed up, they were saying. Okay. Uh, they were just like, just make something for me. Um, the Run the Jewels one was really good. Super hoppy weed ale. Right, dank. That's yes. Basically the direction. They want something dank. Yeah, so I haven't heard much yet. I'm kind of curious to see what they do. That's always a fun little wrinkle in the summer, especially if they throw, somebody throws some tickets. Right. If AB is a sponsor of Pitchfork this year, I think... Goose Island might have been last year, but AB wasn't the beer. It was like back to maybe it was Gorge or something like that. Interesting. I do remember or Heineken or something. When, when Goose was independent, um, they sponsored Pitchfork, and then Heineken outbid them. So then it was Heineken for a few years. And then when Goose sold, they bought the rights back. Yeah. But I haven't been to Pitchfork in a few years, so yeah. I don't know where it is today, but... That at one point it was like that. It was Goose, then Heineken, then Goose again. Mm-hmm. It could be something different now. Yeah. Right. Um, but that's always a good party. There were some years where I prefer that festival and North Coast. Oh, I prefer those over Lollapalooza. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Lollapalooza is coming up, but I don't think there's any beer related things. It's always, it's always uh, big beer. Yeah. Always big beer, always 20 bucks or whatever. Mm-hmm. You're better off just getting the wine option at Lala if you're going to drink. If you want to drink, yeah. No. But the trend is basically not to drink, so these places aren't. We'll just do pop, extra. Just pop an edible. Oh and yeah. You get probably one, one or two beers and some water. Yeah. That's your, that's your day. Yeah. Just roll all day. Yeah. You're you don't like, even drink at all. Right. Drinking's like what your folks do. Drink. It's gonna. You're gonna pass out from drink. Just pat your and miss the show. So let's just you know get high and just chill. No. Let's sort of you know. Whatever it takes, you know, for the for the youngsters, whatever it takes. Yes, but they're not drinking. They're not drinking. They gotta get on these hobby lagers. They're delicious. They hydrate. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else before we wrap up uh, our first episode of July? Um, I think that's it. Um, shout out to um, the Map Room. Um, I forgot about them. Yeah. So. <laughs> Taking the kid to summer algebra, and I need a place to hang out and take my meeting, so I'm not late for pickup. Okay. So you either go to Starbucks. I'm like, fuck Starbucks. I hate everything about it. But the map room opens at seven in the morning. Yeah, and they got coffee. They got and, coffee and pastries and donuts, and they close at two a.m. Do you have to pay for the pastries, or is it kind of complimentary? I, I, I was there for a lunch call, so I miss pastries. Okay. But they stop at eleven thirty, so seven thirty, eleven thirty, pastries and donuts, and then. But now you know, so you could get there a little earlier. You know? And sometimes working from a coffee shop is, a, you can focus more than you would if you're at home. You know? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. sometimes. Like, my place is way smaller than, like, Brad's place. But, you know. I, 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 there's, I, there's, there's lots of distractions <laughs> that happen when you work from home, especially as most of us have laptops where you're like, well, should I sit outside? 
What should I sit on this couch and work? Uh, what should I do here? Yeah. I hadn't been to Map Room in forever, so it just reminded me of a simpler time and beer and life. It was just very cool. Yeah. So cheers to the Map Room. There's literally a bunch of like National Geographic magazines, like hundreds against the right. wall. Yeah. I should do that this summer and just go work somewhere. And I haven't done that in so long. Just like a morning work until lunch and just be like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. Oh, but that was cool. So map room was nice. I haven't been there in a while. Um, so you got beer then? Uh, beer for tacos. 3.8%. Okay. Bring it on. Right. We got the beer. beer thon still sitting here. Was yeah. One percent? What was it? <laughs> <laughs> it's tiny. It's tiny. Um, I remember one year. Well, their anniversary party is always the, the weekend of Fobab, it seems like. So there's a couple of times I've been to Fobab, and then the very next morning, you go, and it's like, Map Room's 20th anniversary, like Sunday morning. Mm. And it's always a very cool kind of one-two step if you're, if you're up for it, is right. Map Room's anniversary, the weekend of Fobab, usually. So, cool. yeah. But, yeah, that's it. All right, sweet. Uh, so, Nick, where do people find you, get in touch? We're not here. Hey, man, I'm on Twitter, at Nicosio. I'm on Twitter, at B-Rad, Chicago Beer Pass, Twitter. I made us a threads. We got the threads. Threads, what are you talking about? The new, the new Twitter, the Facebook Twitter. It's called Threads. It's called Threads. Man, I'm out the loop, man. We got, we got, we got Threads. We got a Threads. All right, as long as we got one. We all got right, one. All right, okay. We're safe. Cool. We're over a million. I was oh. under a million on the sign up. Threads. What the fuck are you talking? About? Uh, I gotta look this we're up. There man. and then, no plans for hiatus um, anytime soon. Probably next week we will recap our favorite beers of the first half of 2023 so look for that and take care cheers